Here this morning on Smith versus Smith. We'll start with the motion for temporary orders. Council? Eric Johnson on behalf of Mr. Smith, who is present. Good morning, Your Honor. John Coy on behalf of the respondent, Penelope Smith. Uh, Mr. Johnson, this is your motion. I've read the pleadings. Um, please proceed with your argument. Your Honor, we are here on the motion, uh, as, as you've mentioned, for temporary orders in this matter. Mr. Smith is, uh, is the petitioner, and he is the one who's filed this motion. We are seeking a situation where the only real issue is custody. The parties have already agreed to joint legal custody, and we've got the wording of that that we'll prepare later for the order. The parties also are in agreement, and counsel, notify me if I've done anything wrong. Uh, we've also agreed that the parties have no dispute as to their incomes. My client makes $3,000 a month as a booking agent, and Mrs. Smith is making $14 an hour, if I remember correctly. So there's no dispute as to the income. Uh, the child support order will reflect whatever the custody order will be, Your Honor. So the main issue we're here for today is the question of custody. My client is seeking joint physical custody on an equal time sharing 50-50 basis. Uh, unless there are any other questions, you mentioned that you had read my pleadings, we would just reserve whatever time we have left to any responses that Mr. Coy would make. But just in a nutshell, we'll say the parties both work. They have three children ages uh, ranging from 16 down to seven. The middle child, if I remember correctly, is how old? 13. 13. Um, Mrs. Smith has been, has been working outside the home for the past couple of years, as we understand it. The parties separated back in September of 2015. So it's been about five to six months since they have been separated. My client works from home as a booking agent, and so the children both live near each of their parents. My client has the housing that's sufficient to house all three of the children, and we'd like to do that. They have a good relationship with their father, and we see no reason why that shouldn't continue. He can get them to school, he can pick them up. Work, housing, school, all those things would be the same. We encourage the children to remain with the same kinds of friends and in the same environment that they've known that can happen. The parties live close enough together where that's not going to be a problem. And so we would ask that it be a joint physical 50-50 custody arrangement. Are there any questions, Your Honor? So he, how much time is he working from home? He works full time from home. He's a 40, he, he, he has a 40 care, hour. He can't care for the children while he's at home working. To be honest, he does have a situation where he has to be at his desk when he is working. However, he can take an occasional break if an emergency were to arise or something like that. The children are within earshot. His, uh, his office is in his, in his bedroom and it's a single level. So everybody is within, is within uh, he can see everybody, he can hear everybody, and the children can help themselves. As again, you've got a 16 year old, a 13 year old, and a seven year old. And, and so, he works during the day. He works a nine to five shift. And, and is that a permanent situation? His schedule does not change. He can request changes if he likes, but that's the schedule he has at the moment. Thank you. All right, Mr. Coy. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, there are a number of things that I want to respond to, but it, it is correct that the primary issue before the court today uh, has to do with custody. The father is asking for a 50-50 arrangement, but that is simply not an arrangement that the children have been used to over all these years. Um, ex with, with minor exception, uh, in fact, these parties were married for 18 years and there was a couple year period uh, all the way back in 97 through 99-ish that the mother worked out of the home for a couple of years. Uh, she had a full-time job at that time, but it's just been quite some time since that took place. Uh, and then it's just been recent, since February of last year, that she uh, has started working full time again. Uh, the youngest child is seven, in school now, and of course the children are in school most of the year, uh, and so it's, it's not created an issue for her to be able to get back to work again. Um, the father uh, talks about his time uh, at home as, as if he were available for the children. I appreciate that opposing counsel acknowledges that he does work uh, while he's there, and I think that was a, 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 an excellent pointed question to the opposing party. In fact, uh, not only does he work when he's at home from 9 to 5, uh, we dispute his allegations that, that it's a, you know, such a fixed, defined time. Um, it's, it kind of goes over. Sometimes it works earlier. He was working earlier in the morning. That was my client's experience when they've been together. Um, 
and so he's 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 not available for the children when the children may need help. He's, his work has comes first; it always has. It's one of the reasons that we're here today. Uh, and uh, so I just want to make clear that even though he is at home, it's correct that uh, that doesn't mean he's always available for the children. In fact, uh, my client is available for the children. She gets off of work such that there's just a very short uh, period of time when the children would get home from school and mother wouldn't be available. It is fortunate in this case that both of the parents live relatively close together. Uh, my client uh, doesn't contest, uh, doesn't have a problem with the fact that it might be appropriate for the children to go to their father's home for an hour or two after they get home from school until the mother gets home from work. Uh, and in fact, we're being very forthright with the court. Um, the oldest... So, so what about mornings? I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. Um, the children are off to school before my client needs to be um, to work. If, he, if, he, if, if we do joint custody, is he going to be able to get the kids off to school in the mornings? Uh, well, we don't think that that will be a practical uh, solution because of the fact that his work is inconsistent. Sometimes he does have to take calls and is handling things in the morning that doesn't make it practical, practical for him to uh, be with the kids in the morning. Uh, no, that's fine. Um, so in any event, um, my client, she, she wants to have the children have a good relationship with the father. She is seeking sole custody here today, um, but she's not trying to interfere with any relationship. It's just that this is what's best for the children. They're, they've been accustomed to their mother being the stay-at-home mom for most of their lives, and now even though she's gone back to work, she's still the one that's there for them when they get home from school. Well, like I said, there'll be a couple hours where she won't be there right when they get home from school, but they've been accustomed to spending most of their time with mom taking care of their needs. In fact, she's been the one that's handled all of their doctor's appointments. Um, uh, she's been traditionally the one that's always gotten them off to school. Um, and she is uh, not to um, defame the father's relationship, if you will, with the children, but she's always been the one that's more involved. She's been the one that's involved with their school and with the teachers. Uh, he's always been more focused on his work, and she has a closer bond, a closer connection with the children. They come to her when they have problems. and. Uh, uh, they, my, my clients, based on her experience after all these years, it's, it's her understanding and her sense that the children certainly are more comfortable with her. Now, there's another issue um, that I do want to bring up just quickly, and that is the fact that the father, um, he has had a drinking problem. Um, he still does drink. And sometimes that's an issue. And I think it makes the children uncomfortable. The mother's testimony would be that it does make the children uncomfortable when he's drinking in the home. Um, it's not the way that they were raised. Um, and indeed, uh, he was arrested for a DUI um, at one point, because, well, just as demonstration that he's not got complete control over that issue. Um, well, just drinking in general. So if he's over, pardon me? Well, he will drink at home. I, I, I can't say that the children have, uh, the children don't drink, but the children would know if he had been drinking is, is, uh, is our position. So, um, I think those are the most significant issues. You know, I hate to say this uh, again, we support the father's relationship um, with the children. We just think it would be hard on the children um, to now with this divorce, with everything else that they're going through, to upset the apple cart and have them, well, here's another point, that, that they live with their mother in the home that they've always lived in. They're going through enough with this pending divorce that it just doesn't make sense for the children now also to have to have a complete change in their living arrangements and be with the father whom, who hasn't been the primary caregiver for the children over all their lives. Um, so with that, uh, I do want to just point out uh, one issue, and that is that the father has uh, engaged himself in pornography online. Um, to our knowledge, the children haven't been exposed to that, but it's a risk. It's a risk that my client has legitimate concerns about because he has that material on his computer. And uh, we have a concern. We, I don't think it's... In, it, it's appropriate for the father to have standard statutory parent time. And we think things would be fine under those circumstances. But if they were to live there half of the time with the father, we're not so sure that it's going to be a safe environment. That's a long period of time to expect the father to not fall back into some of these habits that he's had. So um, with that, we appreciate um, the court's time. And we respectfully ask that the, uh, 
the court uh, award standard statutory parent time to the father under the minimum guidelines at 30-3-35. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to respond to those things then, uh, there's, there's a question about Mr. Smith's work schedule. He does not work beyond 5 o'clock. There may be times occasionally when his shift will end at 5 o'clock where he has to shut down or he has to file a simple report, but that just takes a few minutes. For all intents and purposes, his work schedule ends at 5 p.m. He does not, it does not shift, it does not change, and he does not work late. I will point out that uh, Mrs. Smith does work outside the home and that by the time she's off work, she actually spends more time getting back home than Mr. Smith would because he works in the same place where he lives. I want to point out also that this question of the bond and things of that nature, there's no, there's no evidence before the court that would establish that objectively. The children love both parents. I don't think there's any dispute about that. The children have a bond with both parents. These are three boys. They need their father. They love their father. The oldest child spends most of his time since the separation actually spending the time at my client's house in his apartment. He spends more, most of his time and most of his overnights there getting himself back and forth. The other two boys love both parents. We see no reason why the divorce of two spouses should mean the kids divorce their parents. There's no reason for that. This is temporary orders and if for some reason the children are shown to be suffering in a joint custody arrangement, we can always come back and ask for a modification of that, of that situation. But I don't see why we would not give joint physical custody a losing chance, at least, at this temporary level. I wanted to point out Mr. that, Johnson, yes? What have been the arrangements since the separation? Can you please remind me? Well, there hasn't been any formal arrangement. There's no agreement they've had. And so the 16-year-old has, ha, has a driver's license, he can drive himself back and forth, so he's more autonomous and he spends most of his time at his father's house. But we don't mean to imply by that that it's because he doesn't like his mom. He just likes to spend time at his father's house. He has his own room there. The other two boys are in the other room. Mr. Smith is in his own room where he has his office as well. So right now it's been back and forth. I will say that the children have spent more time with Mrs. Smith than with Mr. Smith but that's over Mr. Smith's objections. He doesn't like it that way. It's why we're here today, because we could not work out an arrangement that is satisfactory to both parties. Right now, though, they've been spending more time at their, at, at their mother's home than they have spent with their father. Do you have any other questions? Does that answer your question, Your Honor? Sorry, no, I appreciate that. Uh, All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Coy. I appreciate uh, the arguments that you've put forth. I think at this point I, uh, I'm going to award, uh, award primary custody to the mother, M M Mrs. Smith at this point. Um, that's not my, that, as you know, Mr. Johnson, uh, Mr. Smith, that does not necessarily represent what my final decision in this is going to be. This is just a temporary order. and. Um, Many judges consider a temporary order to to lay the ground for the permanent order, and I, I don't operate that way. I believe that a temporary order is just that; it is just a temporary order, and um, so I want you to know that. Um, my reason for coming to this decision is um, primarily I, I heard some proffer regarding the bond of the relationship w with the mother and uh, I didn't really hear that rebutted I think that 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 is um, a valid reason to ha have a, a serious amount of um, parent time and and a valid reason to um, award uh, cus physical custody at this point at this juncture and um, plus the fact that uh, for the temporary order purpose, I, I do take into account how long uh, this particular scenario since the separation has been in place. So I, that was my rationale for this decision. Um, let's make sure the kids get to school on time. Let's make sure uh, if, father, if father does have time, I would like to see um, him have uh, what's called Miss Smith, which is called uh, first refusal. First refusal means that I'd like him to uh, be granted time with the children. If, for instance, he's not working on one day and you are, 
uh, we ought to make sure that he has physical custody of those children as opposed to a grandmother or a, or a babysitter or a daycare. And uh, his time with those kids is, is important. Uh, we will put in place minimum parent time at this point. So I trust the parties can figure out exactly how they want to coordinate that minimum parent time, whether it's going to be a, uh, every other week or whatever. Would you, can, would your honor, consider the provision that would allow the midweek to be an overnight as opposed to just for three hours? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Well, how do you feel about that, Mr. Coy? Yeah, thank you for the chance to respond to that. We really do think that it's important for the children to be able to spend the overnights with mother and to be able to have them get the, uh, uh, have her get them to school in the morning. If it helps reassure the court, and I hope uh, that the court accepts my client's sincerity, and that she is perfectly willing to allow the children to have time with their father when it makes sense for them to be over there. So if the children prefer that, if they want to be over there, if they're asking to stay over there, or if they're perfectly comfortable staying over there, she's not gonna stand in the way of that. But to impose that on the children when that's not what's been happening, that's not where they're comfortable, um, I don't think is the appropriate uh, solution today. So we'd ask that we justify the minimum guidelines and I assure you that my client will be reasonable uh, if there are times when it makes sense for the children to have more time or even overnight over at their dad's. But right now, that's not their input, their uh, desire is. She's still going to be the primary custodial parent, and there is a provision in the Utah code that will allow the non-custodial parent, or in this case, a joint custodial parent without without equal time, to have the midweek, the overnight, and what, what's, uh, that's what we know as fat weekends, where rather than returning the children on Sunday, they would then be taken to school by their father. Uh, he works from home. The idea that you can't get the kids to school, there's, there's no evidence. We would just ask, Your Honor, if that is, feels appropriate to the court, that we have may impose the, the midweek, which would be a Wednesday in this case, overnights with fat weekends, and with that, also ban. I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson. So you're saying you're saying you want fat weekends too, in uh, addition to a midweek? Yes. Just, just as, just as 30 3 35 point, uh, what is it, one provides, that's what we're asking for. We don't see any reason why that couldn't work. You know, you know if I could also just interject, and this isn't maybe a, a significant point, but if it helps the court make its decision in some respects, that plan wasn't set before the court. I didn't argue that in any detail in my brief response right now. They were came in here asking for 50-50, and we came here asking for sole custody, and now they're saying, well, since we didn't get what we wanted, can we, can we give a little something else instead? And that I just don't think that's procedurally appropriate. That's exactly what we're doing. We make no bones so what, so what I'm ordering is this. I'm ordering that there's going to be a minimum parent time. Uh, I will grant Mr. Um, Smith at least one overnight during the week. I think that that is, um, and the parties can, can what I think ought to happen is the parties ought to um, work that out between themselves what night that's going to be, whether it's going to be on a weekend night or whether it's going to be uh, in the middle of the week. But um, uh, I'll leave that <laughs> between you. Um, otherwise, I'm ordering standard minimum parent time for Mr. Smith. That'll be the order of the court. And Mr. Johnson, can you please, actually Mr. Coy, I think we'll have you prepare the order. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.